We're in Genesis chapter 17. We're going to be dealing with verse, well, we'll start with verse 15. Genesis 17, 15. And um, we, um, we're going to be dealing with Sarah and, um, uh, and her name change. And really, <clears throat> one of the first times that that the Lord really focuses in on her, and yet she's not um, she's not in the conversation, but God's talking to Abraham about her. But it's still information in relationship to her. <clears throat> it's also the first time that God mentions her in relationship to the promised seed, to the firstborn, to Isaac. And um, so there is um, a, a mammoth change, and certainly to Abraham, because Abraham has pretty much assumed that Ishmael was the firstborn. And even up, up to this point, in other words, from, from Genesis 17, verse 1, through 14, if you will, um, God was talking to Abraham about the seed that was coming and he's going to come and I'm going to bless and I'm going to do all this stuff. And Abraham's applying that to Ishmael. And for the first time, God mentions that it's going to come through Sarah, which as of yet had not had a child. So let's read it. Uh, we'll start at verse 15. And God said unto Abra Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, and the reason why I called her Sarai instead of whatever name I've used before and didn't know how to pronounce it anyway, is that I got on my iPad and I went to my Bible app and I played the audio version and they called her Sarai and then Sarah. So after um, 47 years, or however long I've been in the ministry, uh, Maybe I got it right, <clears throat> or somebody else got it wrong, and now I'm copying their version of wrong. As for <clears throat> Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations." Kings of people shall be of her. All right, we'll stop right there. <clears throat> so these are these are uh, uh, big, world-changing things that God is saying that will need to redo Abraham's mind concerning where who the who the seed is which god has had to do that from the beginning over many others that he's thought well this has got to be it um to um god's mind concerning the seed the son <clears throat> the firstborn and uh again here we go again and this is the same pattern that we take because we, uh, when we first get born again, uh, we are easy, uh, it is easy for us to follow what can preach good, but who knows how they live, or what can, um, what seems, what we would call like Jesus, you know, you know precious Jesus, gentle and mild. Uh, so we say, well, that's, that's luck, that's, you know, <clears throat> but uh, we have to be awakened. We have to, we have to hear God's word, not the preaching of the words, but we have to hear from his heart, his plan, and who that pertains to. And we even, we even make it us. I mean, you know, we're... We're the one. We're the chosen. We wouldn't say we're the Christ. We know Jesus is in us, but we would, we would think what Paul calls more highly of ourselves than we ought. 
All right, so um, uh, in the verses leading up to these mentioned here, Abraham would have every right to think God was talking about all these blessings as they pertain to Ishmael. All right, and we've discussed that before, but for the first time, Sariah is brought into the picture and is brought into the picture strictly in one relation. The seed's coming through her. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what God states in these verses should immediately void out any thought of Ishmael as the firstborn, for he came through Hagar. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, Abraham's thinking, and you know, shortly in these same verses, we're going to see that he hadn't given that up yet. Um, that um, uh, when God states that the seed is coming through, whose name changed now is Sarah, um, that voids out the thought of anybody else. Not Hagar, therefore, not Ishmael, not, you know, anybody else that you might think that it is. No, it's going to come through her, okay? <clears throat> um, but as we shall see, little takes place concerning cha changes in Abraham's view of who should be the firstborn. Is that us or what? God can speak to us. He can speak to us through sermons or words or books or uh, directly. Uh, and we can uh, already have our mind made up as to what's important or what's the Lord. Because um, we know. Yeah, that's the way we think. Well, because I know. I don't know that I trust anybody else, but I trust me. You're trusting the wrong person. <clears throat> you shouldn't trust me either. Um, to hear, to hear the Lord talk about his son is not a light thing. It's not something to be passed over or, or um, played with lightly considered lightly, uh, that's an eternal fact. All these other things, all this, you know, I'll give you this land, all this and all that. <clears throat> but that son, his son, that's eternal. And that's an eternal relationship. And, it, you know, I mean, we don't know what, what eterna, uh, eternal eternity was like before the world before mater material things. Basically, all we know is there was a father and he had a son, and there's the Holy Spirit. Who knows? What if that really was the father's world? Was his son? And what if the Holy Spirit loved to, to you know, just bless the son? I mean, because we're not really given a lot of information. So, um, but in stating these words, it also signals that there was something in God's heart, and God's saying this about Sarah, there's something in God's heart that Abraham was completely unaware of, even as he walked as if he was in the know, as if he knew. I've been, I've had... Many appearances of the Lord, Abraham could say. Um, he could turn to Lot and say, how many have you had? Or, or anybody else. Um, and so we gauge the reality of the Lord by our, our experiences instead of by his nature. And, and what's in his heart, in this case specifically, that his son, that all basically would come to and through and by and his son. So, um, uh, what was that something? It was still the specific son that God approved. That's what was in God's heart. Um, 
it's interesting when you go through the Old Testament how much it deals particularly well I mean it, it does with sacrifice and there is a word that uh, is very connected to that that I think also is um, important to the heart of God and it is the word acceptable that he wanted an acceptable sacrifice um, that it was and in his heart he's not going you know there could be various ones that are that he's thinking of his own his son and and uh, you know uh, the scripture in Ephesians uh, the first chapter talks about that we are accepted in the beloved. I mean, that those are powerful words on several fronts, okay? First of all, there is acceptance, and it's acceptance for us if we're in. It's not just generally we're accepted. Oh, well, now you're accepted. Jesus did this back there somewhere, and now we're just accepted. It doesn't say that. It says we are accepted in the Beloved. We're accepted in Him. Meaning that He's the acceptable one. That's the true meaning. See, we're, we're still running around being accepted when we're not. We are in Son, as it, as it declares in Hebrews, the first chapter. But we, we, we cannot read the words and each word be from the Lord and therefore we are impacted we think of ourselves we are accepted and then whatever comes you know okay Jesus did it he did it no 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 we are accepted and then he says in and then he says the beloved the beloved say and say we're accepted in Jesus of Nazareth. It didn't say we were accepted uh, in the, the guy that uh, went to the cross. It says we're accepted in the beloved. Well, you can't get more accepted than that, than being in the very one that he loves. And, and beyond that, having that beloved put in us, can't get any greater. But then there's the word beloved and not thinking just in terms of God's heart, uh, really loving that guy. But the be word beloved is always a term for the firstborn. This is my beloved son. Take now, God says to Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son, the son whom thou lovest. It's the beloved son. Joseph was the beloved son. And... Um, uh, Jacob was the beloved son. See, there's so much to just peel back in relationship to Jacob. But he was the beloved. We go, well, how do you get that? I mean, when he, when he was passing, when um, Isaac was passing out the blessings, um, they had to trick him for, for Jacob to get the blessing. See, this is, this is the way we think. But you got to go... You got to go further back. You got to go back. You got to go back to when they first were born. And when they first were born, God made a statement. Esau have I hated, but Jacob have I loved. Okay. That's, he's the beloved son. And we look at it and we say, well, what a mess. What a horrible mess that man was. Oh, well, could we just have the Lord just open all of our eyes to each other? Not even ourselves. Let's just look at whatever, how big a mess everybody is around us. Um, we are accepted in the loved firstborn. Firstborn. He's the firstborn among many. We go, oh, well, then there was a second born and a third born. It's not, we went over this a long time ago, but, you know, probably around uh, class number, yeah, never mind. Um, it's not 
it's not a numerical thing. He's not firstborn doesn't mean a numerical thing. It doesn't even mean a numerical thing in birth order, because you know Ishmael was the first was the firstborn, if you will, and Esau came out before Jacob, and on and on and on. So it's not it's not first. It's the firstborn. That's just a name for what God says. This is the preeminent one of my heart. This is the one to whom all goes and everyone else comes up under that or in that in the, in the truest case. So much more to that, but you know, we've never dealt with the New Testament things pertaining to the firstborn because I felt like I heard from the Lord that we would discover the firstborn more in the Old Testament and it would open up the scriptures in the New Testament in relationship to that instead of um, New Testament um, uh, viewpoints without any foundation that God laid in the scriptures. Okay, so um, so what was that something that was in God's heart that Abraham was completely aware of? It was still the specific son that God approved or the acceptable son. The acceptable son. Oh, you know, Okay, so let's look at this. Let's let's try to look at it within the framework of what we talked about, but a little more. When Israel, anybody, or the nation offered a sacrifice, uh, whether it was an individual at his home or whatever, or he went up to the to the tabernacle, or before that with with. Uh, 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 Jerusalem or whatever, or, or the thousands that they offered, you know, during the feast days or during special occasions on one day. Um, they all had to be the, an acceptable sacrifice. Every, you couldn't take one that wasn't. Uh, it had to be acceptable to God. They might even say, well, I don't understand why this is so acceptable. They, they probably didn't understand, you know, well, he said this one, so I can examine it and that it's going to be acceptable. But, you know, I can go, okay, well, he likes perfection or something. No, 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 no. No. He loves his son. And he wanted us to offer that in place of our imperfection and to be satisfied with being accepted not just by the beloved but in him and it moved the father's heart fire would come down it would the fire would prove that it's acceptable the fire didn't prove it was rejected the fire proved that it was acceptable it was the accepted sacrifice. It was the given son. The firstborn is always meant for sacrifice and to be that to the father if it's, if it's a true firstborn. All right. Okay, so uh, back to Sarah. <laughs> verse, uh, verse 15, God changes Sarai's name to Sarah, which means princess. But no other change immediately takes place in Sarah's condition either. In other words, it's going to be, it's going to be a year before she, you know, has the baby. And, um, and I can't even remember right now. Cause I've been through all this so many times. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it's a year when it comes, 
it is the time of life. And I know that's in the scriptures. I know that. But that's the important thing. It's the time of life. Jumping ahead. The time of life. Come on. Get excited. This is, this is what we want. This is what we live for. We don't live to be Christians. Thank God he's taken away all of the, the, the steeples and the, the buildings that made us Christians. And, 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 and even, the, you know, we can't even have communion together and we can't hug and we can't, and those make us a Christian. No, the time, we want the time of life. We want the seed to come forth. And that's what we live for every day and yearn for. And we yearn for it because we, we discovered it to some small level in the heart of God and said, if that's what you want, I want to give you your son. I want that for you and I want that for me. Time of life. But the Lord says, um, I'm changing your name, and for a whole year, and remember, she even called her mother of nations. I'm changing your name. <laughs> you are this in my heart. But where are we going to find that change? We're going to find it in his, heart, in his heart. You Stop looking at yourself and trying to change. Stop, you know, focusing on, well, he said yesterday. I mean, it was a word from the Lord <laughs> because he said it. Um, and then you, the next day we go, well, where is it? And then the next day and then a week passes and we're going, where is it? And then a month passes and where is it? And then two months and then we start getting discouraged. Because Sarah was not changed from the moment that God said you're changed. There was no outward manifestation of any difference with her. All right. So, I mean, the same, same with Abraham in the same time period, too, because he was going to be a father of nations and you got to start with one buddy and you don't have even one for a whole year and they had reason personal reasons to doubt themselves much less one another as we'll see <laughs> there there is that doubt um, but they had personal reasons to doubt themselves because of their condition because how old they were you know, and, you know, we have personal reasons. Well, you know, I always start, but I never finish. And or, you know, I I get excited, but then I, you know, OK, well, can we see Sarah? Maybe, you know, three weeks in, she thinks about it, and that experience and God saying that and feeling Abraham when he came and related it to her. And she goes, oh, OK, OK, I'm back. Yes. And then. You know, the long, hot desert, you know. And uh, so goes into doubting again. Well, I guess, he's, I guess God's just not going to reveal his son in me. You know, with all my heart, I believe in the revelation of Christ. But I believe that many of us may quite possibly have religionized the term so much that it's out of bounds of what the Lord is trying to do and we will never reach it because we've made it something that that he's not talking about what if he's just talking about the time of life yeah it'll be the revealing of his son but it it's going to be the time of life see and Lord you know here's the difference Lord give me a revelation of Christ Okay, how about this one? Lord, bring me into the time of life. It's a little more powerful, maybe. I don't know. You think about that one. All right, so um, in verse 16, God says that he will bless her. Oh, this is so good. 
This is so good. If, if uh, there was just a little head on here and a little body on this microphone, I would just have hugged it just then. I really would. I would just it's so good. We're going to enjoy this. It is, it is the explanation of God's meaning when he says, I will bless you. I will bless her, he tells Abraham. I will bless her. Well, praise God, I'm going to get slaves and I'm going to get, you know, people, uh, you know, all the things that Abraham got when he came out of Egypt, Hagar, all that stuff. I'm going to get money and I'm going to get a better job and I'm going to get this. God's going to bless me, you know, and somebody can prophesy. And the Lord's going to bless you. Well, I mean, what if we could go back for over the last 50, 60 years of every church service and every tent revival and every uh, uh, televangelist that said God will bless you, that, that nothing happened. I mean, is it possible that in all of that, hardly anything really, really happened in terms of what we might have thought blessing was? So, let's consider this. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to help our hearts lead us in and not our understanding that we already have that is not understanding at all. It's just religious facts drawn from truths that have been spoken that we have formulated to say this must be what they mean. And send your heart to the Lord. Open the heart to the Lord. He, only He can bring the, the time of life. Let your heart get out in front and tell your mind to shut up. Tell your theology to shut up. Um, I'm not trying to take away, you know, you say, well, you're the one who taught it. <laughs> I, I hope I've still been teaching the same thing. But nonetheless, my heart needs to be there. And so does yours. That's, the, that's our goal. That's our goal. That's what he wants. And we're, that's why we're together like this. You know? I mean, just listening to classes on Skype has got to be insanity after a while, unless you're just going, I want the Lord. I want you, Jesus. I'm not looking to have Randy's teaching. I'm not looking for another class. But if there's one moment, one word, one, one phrase, one night when, when it just rushed in and the Holy Spirit rushed in and I knew this is the track. We need to stay on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. All right, so let's talk about this blessing of Sarah. In verse 16, God says he will bless her. In what way did God bless her? Did he give her riches, acclaim, or power? was the blessing found in that God spoke concerning bringing about healing to her closed womb. See, even I think even that's wrong, to, to think that that's what happened, that God brought healing to her closed womb. So, let's... While that will be a factor, yet God is very specific about the nature of the blessing. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. The blessing is the son. Oh my God. You, you know, look at, look at the angelic visitation that came to, to Mary. Hail thou favored of the Lord and all this stuff. And go, yeah, 
you know, and the Catholics own, excuse me, I'm not putting that in denomination, but, the, you know, oh, oh, Mary is so special, you know. They even said that to, you know, to Jesus, blessed are the, the paps that you've drawn from. And he said, blessed are those who know the kingdom, the government of God within them. No, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's him. It's the coming forth of the son. Okay. So the blessing is when he gives us his son in such a way that we are the vehicle through which he comes. What? That could be you. That could be me. That could be us. The, shall I read it again? Praise God. The blessing is when he gives us his son. Oh, no, 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 not just salvation. And I got the son when I got saved. The blessing is when he gives us his son in such a way that we are the vehicle through which he comes. We are blessed to have him in us, but we're more blessed that we're the vehicle of his, his life coming forth, that time of life. I'm not crazy. Well, I'm a little crazy. But the scriptures are not crazy. It, it fits. It, it fits. It's not a bunch of random thoughts and teachings. It fits perfectly because it's fit perfectly in the heart of God in this manner. The blessing is when he gives us his son in such a way that we are the vehicle through which he comes. That's what God calls a blessing. I can see God talking to Abraham. I'm going to change your name. I'm going to change her name to Princess. Oh, she's going to be like a princess. No, she's pretty much going to live in tents and wander. I mean, that's what the New Testament tells us happened. You know, um, he, you know, never fully possessed the land. Scriptures tell us that. But to God's heart, I have a vessel through whom my son and his life is going to come forth. Not because she's special, not because you're special, not because I'm special, but because the son in us is special and we are blessed to have the Son in us, and we are blessed more when that Son comes forth because that's what God calls a blessing. Here's the, you are blessed. Look what you brought forth, my Son. <laughs> wow. And we should be going, man, I am blessed. I am. So what was Sarah's blessing? It was that she would have the son that God and her husband wanted her to bring forth. There's, you see that double thing there? It was the son. See, we all thought, we all thought that it was the son that Abraham was longing for. And she, all, she thought that's what's going to be the blessing. I will be a blessing to my husband, Abraham, when I bring forth the son that God's been talking to him about. But it's greater than that. It's always greater than us. No matter how great it is, it's always greater than us. Well, how, how would I, how did I put it? It was that she would have the son that God and her husband wanted her to bring forth. All this time from chapter 11 all the way to here, and it still won't come forth till 18, is this 
time wanting it but not having it trying to bring it forth can't do it wondering what's wrong with me it's not there what's the problem is it's not the time of life and you're not ready yet well what do i got i've been i've been in the word i went to bible school i i pray i even give money i you know i think i'm ready and he goes no 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 it's too much of you yet yeah i gotta reduce you down like i did sarah you know make her 99 years old and say okay bring forth there's no way i can't do it don't even don't even call upon me see they both laughed we'll get into that but abraham laughed and she laughed and god laughed that's what isaac means it's not by you it's not not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord it is it is not by uh, blood nor by the power of man it is god bringing forth his son at the time of life and the time of life for us is the time of death when we're we're robbed of all of our great things that we can boast in and give to God. And then this is why Jesus came forth in me, because I was special to him. <coughs> no. And I will bless her. And I will give you a son. Did you ever, did anybody ever get chills when some of these things that are, in, I, that's just scripture right there. I just, chills hit me sometimes. And, you know, I, it, we used to call them Holy Ghost goosebumps. But back then, it was like the manifestation was the big deal. But I know that the, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. That something of eternity just just shot through, just came out, and you just go, oh, I'm in the presence of God. I'm in the, not just words, not just sermons. I'm in the presence of God. This is the Lord. This is the real Lord. This is the true Word of God. This is the true Gospel. Not, not what I'm saying. But when the Spirit is able to release it, it's undeniable that we know we've been in the presence of the Lord. We know that He, the Holy Spirit, is there for one purpose and one reason. And it is to bring forth that Son like the, you know, the the um, what's it called the wives the the midwives are you know he's, in a sense he's like a midwife <laughs> now it's time to push I'm 99 years old I don't have much to push just do what you can <laughs> all right I think I'll stop. Um, I am just I'm just so moved of the Lord. I'm just so dealt with of the Lord. I'm just so overshadowed at times. I and I I know that I am nothing and I don't think that way I don't want to think that way like I said in this in this, in this life ourselves your servants for Christ for, for Christ's sake <laughs> for Christ's sake what a great honor to serve you for his sake 
And, but in the process of taking a lowly servant to serve you, serve up a meal to you, he, the Holy Spirit, gives me these things for you. And I get to be in the presence of him. It's, it's, it's his love for you in that sense, if you will. It's his care for you. And I'm just a servant, but I am, but I, I, I get to, I get to partake, you know, it's like, don't muzzle the ox, it treads out the grain. I'm the ox. The grain is for you, you know. And, uh, and sometimes it just gets so overwhelming of his heart and of his love for his son and of the weaving together of the scriptures. And you begin to see him in light of him instead of in light of, you know, Bible school class or something like that. And it just sometimes is just so wonderfully terrifying <laughs> because it's so beautiful. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, so many times when he shares stuff like this, it's like, uh, Lord, may, this is what I pray when I know it's for you, Lord, may we all gather tonight, not in a class or a teaching, but at a feast table, a table of feasting. And may we take, partake, and enjoy the delicacies of the intricacies of the beauties that's your son. That we may be like Sarah or Mary, vessels through whom the life, that we come to the time of life and in coming there, you get your son and so does Abraham. Anyway, so let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again, Father. Thank you. Thank you for loving your son the way you do. Father, we don't know what to do with the phrase that says God is love. Oh, oh, thank you for loving your son the way that you do. There is no power like it. It's stronger than death. It's stronger than death. And Father, I, I pray that you will always grant that the Holy Spirit can help me be out of the way for your people for your sake, Jesus. For your sake, Jesus. That we may all partake and that we may all drink in. Drink from the waters of life. Taste the bread of life. And come to the time of life. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being our God, our Father, our guide, our, our life, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, and for your sake. Amen. 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 Bless you.